This meeting open. Thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, can I begin by acknowledging the Aboriginal parties whose song lines traverse these lands which we meet on today? The Western Waka Waka, the Gaibal, the Jarawa and the Bigambul peoples. And can I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, for they hold the knowledge, the rich traditions and the bold ambitions of Australia's first people. Can I also recognise those who are online, those who are in the gallery here today, as we move forward to uh, uh, have a meeting in respect to planning matters. I have apologies today from Councillor Summerfield and Councillor Melissa Taylor. Uh, apart from that, leave of absence has been granted uh, to Councillor Megan O'Hara Sullivan. Would some, someone like to move, please, that Councillor Summerfield and Councillor Melissa Taylor be granted uh, leave of absence. Councillor Macdonald and Councillor Shine, those in favour? That is carried. Move then to item three, which is the suspension of, the suspension of standing orders. Would someone like to move accordingly, please? Councillor Von Hoff and Councillor Carl. Those in favour? That's carried. Um, I would now call on Chris to uh, present uh, the matter, Council. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, councillors, council officers, ladies and gentlemen. This report presents the assessment of a development application for a material change of use for extractive industry, being groundwater extraction at 808 Merritts Creek Road, Merritts Creek. The site is about four kilometres west of Hampton and about 11 kilometres south of Crow's Nest and slightly longer by road. Merritts Creek Road is a gravel road running roughly parallel to the New England Highway. Uh, the site is about 1.5 kilometres north of the intersection with the New England Highway. Uh, Merritts Creek Road also connects to the New England Highway about six kilometres north of the site via a short section of Millard Road and about five kilometres north of the site via Hampton Road. Uh, the land is in the rural zone. 100 hectare precinct and is affected by the environmental significance overlay, the agricultural land overlay and the water resource catchments overlay. Uh, the site is currently used for a citrus orchard and dwellings. That's the site here uh, with dwellings, outbuildings and um, the citrus orchard quite visible in the northeast corner. Commercial groundwater extraction is consistent with the definition of extractive industry from the planning scheme and the planning regulation. Extractive industry is impact accessible in the rural zone. It's important to note, however, that the taking of groundwater is not within council's jurisdiction. Water licenses, water permits, and associated approvals for the taking of water are regulated by the Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy. So council is not assessing and cannot approve or refuse the taking of the water. Uh, in this application, council's assessment is limited to the works, uh, the infrastructure and the impacts associated with the use, and particularly with transporting the extracted water from the site. Before I describe aspects that are relevant to council's assessment, I would like to give a brief overview of the current license and permit issues uh, issued by the department uh, the applicant has obtained water permit uh, number 622719 to take water up to the total volume available under their water licence number 608256. This is 18 megalitres per annum. The water licence is valid until the 30th of June 2111 and the water permit is valid until 20th of June 2021. Uh, the department has conditioned that water for the water permit must be taken from a specific bore which is existing and all take must be metered and recorded. The maximum permitted rate of extraction is 0.57 litres per second and this equates to 34.2 litres per minute or 2,052 litres per hour, uh, 49,248 litres per day or 17,000, uh, excuse me, 17.975 megalitres per 365 days. Uh, now I'll talk about council's assessment. Uh, and that's an application for extractive industry, which would permit the water to be transported offsite. 
The assessment deals with the works, the infrastructure and the impacts associated with the use of the land and removing the extracted water from the site. The application was referred to State Government for technical assessment by the Department of Transport and Main Roads. Uh, State Government gave a referral response with no requirements. Five submissions are noted in the assessment report, including a petition with 10 signatures. Uh, submissions raised issues related to traffic and safety, environmental impacts from taking of water, and the impact of additional vehicle movements on local koala populations. Responses to submissions are provided in the assessment report. Uh, the applicant says that they want to continue to operate the citrus orchard and also have the opportunity to sell water in excess of their requirements. This is likely to mean about eight to 10 megalitres per annum is used for cropping with any balance sold off. The split is likely to vary depending on weather, climate, the availability and conditions of future water permits and relevant markets. The proposal is to fill one water tanker truck per day from a water tank beside the bore. If we could go to attachment two, figure two, please, Wendy. Um, we can see on the second page of attachment two when it loads, it's quite a large document, it's one page up, one page down. Uh, the truck would take the water from the site to be processed and bottled nearby. However, the final destination and use could vary depending on markets. So this is uh, there. This is the um, site plan. Oh well, it's the the relevant parts of the site plan. So you can see uh, driveway in here, um, dwellings around here and and just off screen, and uh, circulation area here for large vehicles. Uh, existing bore located here. If I can keep that still, and a water tank here. Uh, the water tank would be necessary due to the slow um, extraction of water. Uh, the application seeks approval for B double trucks. However, Council's engineers advise that Merritt's Creek Road is only authorised for articulated vehicles, which is a smaller vehicle. So recommended conditions limit the truck size to articulated vehicles. Truck numbers are recommended to be limited to a maximum of two trucks per day and recommended conditions require trucks to only enter and exit the site between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. daily, excluding public holidays. This would assist in managing amenity impacts in the area and would limit potential conflicts with school runs and school buses. The proposed use is for low traffic volumes, representing only a very marginal increase in the daily heavy vehicle traffic volumes anticipated on the road network. Uh, with up to two water tankers per day, each with a likely maximum capacity of around 35,000 litres, uh, it could result in a maximum of 24.85 megalitres carted off site in a year. Uh, the conditions as drafted in the report before you do not explicitly limit the capacity, apart from truck size and truck numbers. Uh, on review, I recommend that Council considers an amendment to condition one of the report before you to explicitly limit the maximum capacity to 18 megalitres, consistent with the application material. Uh, the text of the amendment I recommend would start with condition one as it is currently drafted, and this reads, this development approval is for a material change of use for extractive industry, brackets, groundwater extraction. Uh, I recommend the condition would then continue with up to a maximum capacity of 18 megalitres per annum taken off site. Uh, regardless of whether Council endorses this amendment, the impacts of the development may be managed through reasonable and relevant conditions, including limits on vehicle size, vehicle numbers and vehicle access times. Uh, the application has been assessed with regard to relevant matters, including the planning scheme, the state government referral response and submissions, and found to be acceptable. It's therefore recommended for approval, subject to reasonable and relevant conditions. Thanks very much, Chris. Uh, councillors, any questions? Councillor Von Hoff. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Through you, thank you, Chris. I understand what we're doing here today um, is not deciding on the merit of the water licences and the permits and so forth, and that our job today is to consider the works, the infrastructure and the impacts associated with the removal of that water. 
Um, I'd like to draw your attention to page 25 of 41 on board books, councillors. That's page 20 of 25 on the report, Wendy. We're looking at Rural Zone Code, PO4. And it says the uses which are inconsistent with the intent of the zone include, part D, industry activities other than rural industry, extractive industry activities, industries requiring isolation from urban areas. Then in the officer comment below, it states, although defined as extractive industry by the Toowoomba Regional Planning Scheme 2012, proposed use is relatively benign in comparison with other forms of extractive industry. So I seek clarification on you, from you, please, about whether this proposal is consistent or not with the rural the Rural Zone Code PO4 and extractive industry because to my mind relatively benign is an interpretation that I need clarification on. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, the way performance-based planning scheme is, uh, the performance-based planning scheme is assessed and the way the assessment uh, takes place is we start with the fairly straightforward measures like the acceptable outcomes which provide quite clear uh, expectations. Uh, now an applicant will either comply with those requirements or they won't. If they do, it's effectively a tick and we move on to the next item. If they don't, then we look to a higher order provision and we take a look at um, what's, a, uh, what's a broader intent. So this acceptable outcome talks about uses which are consistent and inconsistent in the right hand column, AO4. And then if we look at PO4, it says, the zone primarily accommodates rural activities and related ancillary uses or compatible uses consistent with the values and features of the zone, including its rural production capacity, natural resources, and scenic landscape amenity. So the assessing officer who's prepared this report has reviewed the acceptable outcome, the performance outcome, and in his view, he has determined that this complies with performance outcome PO4 because it uh, is primarily um, associated with the productive capacity or natural resources in the zone. A follow-up question, if I might, Mr Mayor. I'm sorry, I don't think that quite answers my question, which was to say, I don't understand the, the use of the words in the officer comment that it's relatively benign. Yes, it meets the definition of extractive industry, which in the column ahead says that this is inconsistent with the intent of the zone, but it's relatively benign. Would you mind elaborating further, please? Uh, I suspect that the use of the word benign by the assessing officer is a reference to uh, other types of extractive industry, particularly hard rock and gravel and sand extraction, uh, which tends to have a significant uh, significantly greater off-site impacts than this type of use. Uh, this type of use uh, is taking water from a, a bore that is approved by uh, state government and uh, the off-site impacts are, are likely to be limited to uh, potential for noise, which is managed through recommended conditions, uh, potential for increased vehicles on the road network and the additional uh, maintenance requirements um, that may impose. Um, and any other off-site impacts associated with taking the water or um, obtaining the right to take the water and take it off-site is managed by uh, state government. It's outside of our remit. Supplementary. Sorry, could I just add to what um, Chris is saying? Sorry, Chris. Um, if you look at it, it says rural activities other than extractive industries are other rural activities other than rural, sorry, I'll read through it again, sorry. It says, industry activities other than rural industries and extractive industries. So as the, the officer's um, statement is, it's neither consistent nor inconsistent. It isn't defined as either one of those under that code. So as Chris was saying, that's when you step up to the next level and look at the assessment against the performance outcome. So 
the extractive industry is not listed as an inconsistent use. Does that clarify that? Might be, I might be missing something. Doesn't look like it. No, no, it doesn't look like it. So AO says uses that are inconsistent with the intent of the zone include, then you go down to D, yep. extractive industries other than rural industry and extractive industries. So an extractive industry isn't inconsistent in that zone. See, I, I read this as uses which are inconsistent with the intent of the zone include Part D, as you referred to. One, industry activities other than rural industry. Two, extractive industry activities. And three, industries requiring isolation from urban areas. No, that's not the interpretation. Because the, I guess the, the nature of it is too, most of our extractive industries are in rural areas. That's where they occur. And they also fall under that heading that they tend to be, need to be in places of isolation preferably, unless you can meet the criteria with regards to separation. So our, our take is that it, it's not inconsistent or consistent listed there. It's going up to the POs and, and looking at that and seeing where, whether it falls within that, the ambit of that. Councillor McMahon. Yeah, yeah, a few questions. I, um, I appreciate that we're here to look in the works and infrastructure, but I the idea that you can get water from our bores and then sell it to bottles out of town, however it stands when it's our most precious resource, has never sat well with me, I must say. Um, I'm just wondering if you could take me a bit further, and we, we heard about the traffic, the environment, and koalas was, was mentioned. Merritts Creek Road, and I think you said 6 k's to the highway along a dirt road, is that correct? 1.5 to the south, I think, and 5 and 6 to the north, depending on the route. So, um, those dirt roads, I couldn't find anything in the report about neighbours on them and the width of the road and, and dust and, and noise and all that. I read a bit, but could you just expand on um, how that was uh, formulated and, and what consultation was done, etc.? Is it an engineering question, an environmental question, or a, or, or a broader general question that you'd like answered? Because we have an environmental officer and um, an engineer, if you'd like to... Well, look, the environmental the um, aspect of that would be great, thanks. Afternoon, Councillor. Through you, Chair. Um, in terms of the impacts on the road network, because of a single or even two vehicles per day travelling on there, it's not perceivably an environmental concern. Uh, if the engineers deemed that a road upgrade was required and significant clearing was needed, there's actually exemptions for the clearing of vegetation within a road corridor for council uh, road for the council road network. So even if there was perceived to be a requirement to do that clearing, there's legal exemptions that we don't need to assess what that is. We're predominantly looking at what the impacts are going to be on the actual site where the use is going to occur. Dust from a single truck um, doing a loop round to where the bore is located and the tank where it's going to pump out will be of a very short duration and will nowhere near come near our compliance limits for dust from a use. Likewise with noise, a single truck um, doing an entry between the hours of 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is not going to exceed our limits. The pump itself, which will have the capacity to operate 24 hours a day, is considered a regulated device. It's governed by our conditions that we've proposed, but similarly by the Environmental Protection Regulation, which limits a background plus criteria. And for noise, we've also conditioned that some follow-up monitoring be done. So dust and noise, not a problem. Any type of clearing that would need to be done for roadworks, which was not identified as necessary, was not assessed, but there are already conditions that would allow that to occur. Yeah, great answer. Thank you very much. Follow-up, if I may, just could you, um, regarding the proposed idea of koala, habitat, and I know they're the kind of the, the <laughs> creature that everyone's talking about and certainly not the only animal that lives in Toowoomba region, but uh, of equal value to many others. Um, what was the concerns raised in relation to koalas for this uh, application? Uh, thank you, Councillor. So one of the submissions uh, was from a local koala group, uh, which raised concerns around uh, the additional traffic on the road and what impact that might have on koalas. 
And has have our officers done any work into that while uh, habitat stuff? Uh, so based on the additional traffic volume, uh, our engineers have considered that uh, the, uh, the additional vehicles on the road uh, uh, is a marginal increase. And in the, the, uh, the view of the planning officer, uh, there's no uh, warrant for the application based on two maximum uh, vehicle movements uh, each way per day to, um, to impose any special requirements for koalas. Thank you for the answer. Councillor McDonald. Thanks. <coughs> Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, through you to Chris, perhaps. I, I note in the, uh, the report it talks about the applicant suggesting um, they wanted to facilitate a 26 metre long B double, but we have conditioned the, uh, the, the DA in condition 24-4 to a 19 metre long articulated vehicle. Um, we've also conditioned it for two movements of vehicles per day between the hours of 10 and 2, um, which is four movements on the road, I'd assume, four truck movements, mm -hmm. whereas the applicant was suggesting that there'd only be one. I'm just wondering whether that one movement was based on their assumption of a 26 metre long B double as opposed to the 19 metre articulated. Yeah, thank you, councillor. So uh, the applicant has indicated that they intend for one vehicle movement on average per day, uh, whether that's an articulated vehicle, which is 19 metres long, or a B double, which is 26 metres long. Uh, they make reference to making an application to the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator for the right to access the site with a BW, uh, uh, excuse me, with a, with a B double truck. Uh, however, Council's engineers have indicated that the, uh, the largest truck that should be on uh, Merritts Creek Road is a 19 metre articulated vehicle, and that's consistent with um, the typical farm uh, traffic. Yeah, I, I think you know, Councillor Taylor will be able to talk a bit more about that, those the, than I do, but as I understand it, the local roads um, wouldn't allow for that, that size vehicle, the 26 metre. Just a, another follow up, if I could. Talking about the, um, the hours of operation and acoustics and what have you, uh, we mentioned you know, two vehicles per day in 26.1, 26.2 condition, 10 to 2, 26.3 is pumped 24 hours, and I can understand that because that pumps you know, a distance from anywhere else. But then we talk about condition 27, not at all on public holidays. So is that consistent with saying that you can have uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m.? Two vehicles per day pump 24 hours a day, but yet they can't pump on public holidays, or is pumping separate from the other conditions that are above it? The way that condition is drafted, it uh, prevents the use from occurring uh, on public holidays. The use being the movement of vehicles more so than the pumping? The pumping is, is listed as, um, as an activity that's associated with the use, so uh, my reading of that condition is that it would uh, not allow uh, any uh, use to occur on a public holiday as it's currently drafted. So effectively 355 days per year. No, that's, that's okay. I just Maybe the applicant, if they're speaking, might comment on that because if, uh, a fair chunk of this water is being used for irrigation for plants as well, so uh, for trees, and, and maybe that is required for that use. I'm not sure. Just a, a comment more that the applicant might talk to to get a chance. Councillor Carol Taylor. Mr. Mayor, uh, they would have storage as shown on the on the um, on the um, diagram there. Um, the road, as has been mentioned, a B double road's not a B double road, and they can apply to the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator, but it would come back to council for a permit, so it wouldn't be allowed, and it's appropriate it not be allowed um, on on a road like that. Um, I just see on this, I can't find where there are any receptors anywhere along that road. Um, so the four traffic movements a day that, you know, I mean, in agricultural, you've got seasons for things. This would be every day except public holidays. Have we got any people living closely along that road where, where the houses, they're normally listed? They're not listed in this report, I note. Uh, I can uh, note that the nearest sensitive receptor is 230 metres west uh, of the, the bore and pump area. Uh, as for the precise locations of any other sensitive receptor on Merritt's Creek Road, I don't have that information to hand. So we don't know how many people will be, how close they are to the extra dust that's going to be generated here? Uh, I don't have the information about sensitive receptors and proximity to Merritt's Creek Road to Is hand. Any reason why we haven't? Because we normally do in these reports. 
Uh, I um, can't comment on the, the specific reason that that might not be in the report. Um, I can ask our senior environmental officer if he has any um, input when he was completing uh, his referral for the assessment. Thank you, I'd appreciate that. Councillor, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, we don't look at traffic noise from a receptor as a standard condition or, or a standard issue. In terms of uh, dust, one vehicle per day or even two vehicles per day additional, four movements going in either direction is not going to produce enough dust for it to meet our uh, assessment criteria or our compliance criteria of 120 milligrams per metre squared per day. Um, in terms of the closeness of a receptor to the actual road itself, no, did not look at that. Mainly because the use itself was not prescriptive enough to look at that. Traffic volumes just not being high enough to warrant further investigation. Thank you. I would suggest through you, Mr Mayor, if you were one of those people who were living there, you would be very concerned about that and I would probably appreciate in the next report that perhaps we could have that. I know it's only four movements a day, that's what they're allowed to do, but um, I, um, I'll i rest my case there. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Taylor. Uh, Councillor McMahon. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Sorry, just a clarification. Um, you said the, the total capacity of the bore is 18 megalitres a year um, and they're using eight to ten of those for cropping. Um, and then you said there may be 27, I think you said, megalitres per year taken out and you've proposed an amendment to keep it at 18. Um, where is this water coming from if we're using eight to 10 of it for farming? Uh, thank you, councillor. So the application seeks council's approval for using up to 18 megalitres of the water allocation offsite. Uh, the applicant indicates that they require around eight to 10 megalitres per annum uh, to uh, run the citrus orchard. Uh, however, there's no obligation on the applicant to use that water for the citrus orchard, and the total amount used per in any given year will vary um, based on whether, for, for starters, whether they continue to operate the citrus orchard. Secondly, um, the, uh, the short-term weather events, and thirdly, long-term climate. Uh, another factor is likely to be market conditions. So if um, soft drink becomes a valuable commodity, the water for the soft drink may become an increasingly valuable commodity and transporting it off-site may be uh, more, uh, more viable. Uh, the reference to 24.85 megalitres, I think it was, was simply multiplication of two trucks per day times 355 days per year times maximum 35,000 litre capacity uh, articulated vehicle water tanker, which is the largest capacity I could find in Australia. Uh, and slightly larger than the typical volumes, which seem to be around 25 to 30 or 33,000 litres. So a natural limit, uh, or I should say an imposed limit on the conditions as they're currently drafted in the report uh, would be 24.8 odd megalitres per annum uh, if the applicant was able to obtain the right to extract that from state government. Uh, however, if council makes the amended um, the change that, that's suggested in, the, in, uh, in my presentation, it would limit it by council as well to 18 megalitres per annum. Thank you for the clarification. Councillor McDonald. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm in favour of the, the condition being put on there to 18 megalitres to keep it, keep it consistent. The, the question I raise is, is around um, future applications, and Councillor Taylor rightly pointed out if, if there was application to the national vehicle group, that it would trigger coming back to, to council. Uh, if there are increasing volumes of traffic for other activities or what have you, what, what would trigger um, a, a further DA, I guess, would trigger another application um, for other, another use that's on the site. So we could be rest assured all we're dealing with today is what's before us at that level of 18,000 um, megalitres and the vehicle movements that are conditioned, which are up to two vehicles per day between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., other than public holidays. Uh, that's correct, councillor. Anything over and above that would be a decision that, that could well find its way back to council. Uh, so, uh, yes, so uh, change to those conditions uh, would require a change to, um, to the development approval if it's given. Um, and uh, due to the nature of the application, it's likely that that would be required to be brought back before the councillors to consider any change. Thank you. That's it. 
Mr Mayor, if I could just clarify the National Heavy Vehicle Regulator, um, they handle things that are as of right. As this is not a, a standard of a road that would carry a, a B-double, that would come to, back to council officers for a permit and council would say no. So there's no as of right on that road for a B-double. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sean. Thanks, uh, Mayor. Um, just a clarification on the koala uh, issue. It's only an issue, I take it, with respect to the roadway, not, to the, not with respect to the property, which from the photo seems to be citrus fruit trees mainly, rather than gum trees. Right? That's yes, Council, that's correct. OK. And, and secondly, um, with the export of that water from that site, uh, is it... Do you know whether the citrus fruit activity will, be de uh, will decrease with an accompanying decrease in farming, tractor noise, dust and, and uh, type of activity, which might compensate for the once a day anchor movement? Uh, it's not really possible to provide uh, an answer to that question. The applicant may be able to uh, state their intentions any further questions? Councillor Carl? Grab that microphone, get it nice and close to you. I understand your <laughs> current issues. Yeah. Um, thanks, Mr Chair. Um, through you, Chris, was there any consideration given to the accumulation or cumulative number of vehicle movements to and from the property, yeah. given, and I know we're considering two trucks per day, uh, but is there any consideration under the planning um, guidelines around accumulative vehicle movements to and from the property, given it's, the, it's a, an additional activity with the same property? Uh, and I'm considering, you know, picking time and trucking of those limes. Um, do we know how many vehicle movements in total? Uh, thank you, Councillor. I'm not sure that I got all of your question, but I'll try and answer what I, I, th I think I got. Um, the, the application is only for the material change of use, so the existing cropping operation and any impacts associated with that uh, are not being considered or assessed. Uh, in terms of uh, traffic impacts on the road network, that, what was assessed was the additional potential, and that was uh, stated by the applicant to be an average of one vehicle per day and um, recommended to be conditioned uh, by council officers at a maximum of two per day. Yeah, so there's no no real grounds to consider the uh, vehicular movements at harvest time, or picking time. And uh, council, that would be correct. We, we would take the existing operation uh, of the use on the land to be uh, as of right or... Uh, or self-assessable, depending on the exact nature of the use. Yeah, so the age-old nature of and shortcomings of the Sustainable Planning Act, or it's not a SPAR anymore, the current Planning Act, where accumulative impacts are not considered. And, and I consider that in the context of residents, whether it's this application or any other application where there's additional activity that is generated from the same property, um, as is the case here. It's a shortcoming of our planning system. I'd love to see it changed uh, at, a, at a state level. Thank you, Councillor. OK, any further questions, Councillors? Um, Chris, I've heard of impacts uh, on water, on springs, and potentially on uh, uh, flows to the Kuby Dam uh, with the lack of uh, consistency in the creeks as a result of the springs going. I'd imagine that would be a matter for DERM, uh, the government agency, and uh, it's, it really can't be considered in fairness here today. Uh, yeah, that's correct, uh, Mr Mayor. So uh, the Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy uh, actually included uh, an assessment report uh, with one of their recent, uh, one of the applicants' recent permit applications, uh, and they, in they uh, investigated impacts on the, uh, at the aquifer. Thank you. No other questions, councillors? Not, not at this point, Mr Mayor, from me anyway. Yeah, we've got, uh, there's an opportunity for those who submitted in opposition to this to speak now. 
if they wish. <coughs> it would appear that nobody from the submitters wishes to speak. I'll now get the presentation from the applicant. Uh, Kim, would you come down now, please? It normally would be a five minute presentation, uh, but if you wish to have extra time, we'll be timing you. And if there's extra time, we'll, uh, uh, we'll, uh, that'll be a, my choice and I'll let you go. Okay. Thank you. Through the chair, councillors and council officers, thank you for the opportunity to present to you today on behalf of the applicants. I wanted to reinforce and clarify some points raised today in regards to the application. Um, and apologies if any of this is repetitive, but it might help clarify a few of the questions that's been asked today as well. So firstly, in regards to the extraction of the water resource, I confirm that the applicants have obtained all necessary permits and licenses from the Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy. In this regard, the department has approved the extraction of 18 megalitres of water for any purpose. It must be noticed, noted also that the bore is existing um, and has been utilised for irrigation purposes, extracting the same amount of water. Um, so the development itself does not propose to extract any additional water from what is, was already approved and being taken. The permits issued by the department simply allow the applicants to use the water for any purpose. In regards to the environmental impacts, including those on koala habitats, the development will not impact on water supply to koalas or their habitat in regards to water security. Specifically in the department's decision regarding the relevant license, the department noted that the development will not adversely impact connectivity between the underground water and watercourses, lakes or springs or detrimentally impact any other property. Accordingly, the development will not impact water supply to koala habitat areas external to the development site. Um, and the development site itself does not contain any identified koala habitat areas. The development proposes to utilise existing haulage routes, internal driveways, and will not result in any loss to vegetation. So water will be collected and transported off site by a 19 metre long articulated vehicle and is expected to generate an average of one vehicle movement per day. The estimated trip generation rate of one vehicle per day is irrespective of the truck size and is not expected to increase with the use of an articulated vehicle versus a B-double. Given the low daily traffic volumes, the development will not result in any adverse operational issues on the external road network as confirmed and supported within the traffic impact assessment lodged as part of the application. The proposed operating hours of the development between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. have been specifically chosen by the applicants to avoid peak traffic periods in the area, including the school bus times. Um, Councillor Carhill, to answer your question about the cumulative impacts on the road, um, I just wanted to note that they were considered in the traffic assessment, which used traffic count data um, of the existing road network. So that considered all existing traffic on the road network, therefore existing vehicles that are currently accessing the farm, um, and included the additional vehicle movements that will be expected as a result of this development. So the proposed development is not expected to result in adverse impacts on the surrounding amenity of the area. The development is located within the rural zone in an area established by a range of rural uses. The use of an articulated vehicle is within the amenity expectations of a rural production area. It is noted that a 19 metre articulated vehicle is currently the largest as of right designed vehicle to access the site and the local road network. The proposed operations are consistent with the nature of the surrounding agricultural uses, which attract heavy vehicles and machinery for their day-to-day -day operations. The development is unlikely to have detrimental noise impacts, and in this regard, the operate, uh, operating hours of the proposal will be restricted. 
Notwithstanding this, the nature and scale of the use is such that it's not likely to result in adverse noise impacts on the surrounding area. It is further noted that the officer's report recommends the imposition of conditions which would sufficiently deal with any potential noise or dust impacts. Lastly, it's important to note that the applicant's intent for the proposed development is to allow for the diversity of farm operations and to supplement the farm income. <clears throat> This is critical in ensuring the ongoing use of the farm for primary production purposes. The COVID-19 pandemic and associated shutdowns originally led to the applicants to apply for the development application when for demand for their limes plummeted. The original intention of the extractive industry application was to supplement farm income by selling water for bottling, if required in such circumstances as the one they found themselves in during the COVID-19 pandemic. Since lodging the development application and through further research, the applicants have identified that selling the water to a bottling company is the least profitable option. At best, they would receive 0 0.008 cents per litre, which is less than a cent per litre of water, and that's not considering overheads. This led the applicants to further investigate their diversification options, and they have identified much more favourable profits through developing their own kombucha product, which allows them to utilise both their limes and the water, so they can utilise both resources from the property. They have run some trials of selling their kombucha at the local farmers markets, and so far have sold 80 litres, which is the equivalent to selling 160,000 litres of water for bottling. The taking of this water for bottling would be a last resort option and not a profitable one in comparison to utilising the pro their own products to make kombucha. Notwithstanding that, pursuing the water extraction development permit allows them to value add to their property and also gives them the option to take water off site to produce kombucha if the demand <coughs> ever reached that point. I think there was a question earlier also about the size of the, the lime orchard. Um, and I just wanted to note that that's already been dec decreased, um, irrelevant of this development application. Um, some of the limes were removed from the property to make it more sustainable and to reduce waste. Okay, if you can just sum that up now, please. So. Yep, um, that, I'm done now anyway, so okay. thank you. Are there any questions for the applicant? <coughs> Councillor McDonald. Thank you. Thanks very much for the presentation through you, Mr Mayor. Um, just in regard to the kombucha in, and uh, the production of that, does that mean that um, there would be less uh, vehicle movements taking water from off-site or would it be bottled off-site? Uh, that's right. Currently they intend on making the kombucha on-site, so they wouldn't actually even have to utilise this de development permit if it is granted, um, but they, they would prefer to still seek the permit in the instance that the, the demand for their kombucha increased to the point that they needed to, to make it off-site. Um, I understand they have got a, a, kitchen, a food licence from Council and they're operating as a home-based business currently, um, making enough kombucha to sell at the local farmer's market. So none of the water would leave site if that were to continue. Thanks. Any further questions from councillors? Councillor von Hoff. Thank you, um, Mr Mayor. I have a question for Jeff, please, before we go to any further in the, in the debate. And it's back on the point I made initially. Jeff's available. Chris, you mean? Chris? Oh, I thought, no, I thought it said Jeff was the author on the he was. report. Chris, I did the same thing. Chris is the, Chris, uh, is the planner. Yep. Okay, so, so Chris. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Kim, it may be an idea to stay just this way for a moment in case there's further questions. Councillor, sorry, I'm uh, presenting on behalf of Jeff, who's not here today. Okay. Well, we'll see, we'll see how we go here. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I come back to that point that I made in regard to page 25 of 41 of board books, 20 of 25 of the report. Now, this isn't semantics, 
this is adherence to a scheme and we, we live and we die by this scheme. We don't play, pick favourites. We adhere to what's in this scheme. The words of this actually do matter. And, and the applicant, applicant submitted that the proposed development involves an extractive industry commercial groundwater extraction, which is neither listed as consistent or inconsistent use. Okay. Then our officer comment, though, below that, runs contrary to that statement. And it says, this is defined as extractive industry by the Toowoomba Regional Planning Scheme 2012. Comma, the proposed use is relatively benign in comparison with other forms of extractive industry. So, that is an acknowledgement that this material change of use is defined as extractive industry and the qualifying statement there is that it is relatively benign. So if we accept the officer's comment in this report, then it runs counter to the um, consistent intent of the zone and would be considered grounds for the proposed development to have not complied with PO4. Uh, thank you, Councillor. So when I read acceptable outcome AO 4.2 of the Rural Zone Code, it says uses which are inconsistent with the intent of the zone include, I'll skip over the irrelevant ones, uh, D, industry activities. So industry activities are inconsistent other than rural industry and extractive industry activities. So it is, the acceptable outcome isn't giving us grounds to say that this use is inconsistent with the acceptable outcome. Uh, if we take it then to the performance outcome, PO4 of the Rural Zone Code, the zone primarily accommodates rural activities and related ancillary uses or compatible uses consistent with the values and features of the zone, including its rural production capacity, natural resources and scenic landscape amenity. Uh, the assessing officer presents the view that the proposal is consistent with performance outcome four, uh, and I would suggest it's because uh, extracting water is consistent with the natural resources uh, of, the, of the site. And an acknowledgement that it is a relatively benign form of an extraction industry. Uh, yes, and uh, AO 4.2D, lists extractive industries as an exception to uses which are inconsistent. So whether it's benign or whether it has significant impacts, it's neither inconsistent nor inconsistent with AO 4.2. Can you state that one more time? Uh, so it is extractive industry. Yep. That's accepted. Uh, and extractive industry is listed as acceptable outcome AO 4.2 of the Rural Zone Code, uh, sub D, as uh, neither consistent nor inconsistent. Uses which are inconsistent exclude extractive industry at D. So yes, so uses which are inconsistent with the intent of the zone include industry activities other than rural industry and extractive industry. Now we get into interpretation of that, that D because um, that would be one interpretation of it, and another interpretation of it would be that uses which are inconsistent with intent are industry activities other than rural industry, extractive industry activities, and industries requiring isolation from urban areas. So I suppose it will come down to councillors' interpretation of the nuance in that that particular AO 4.2 D. So, Councillor, some punctuation might help. It might have. It might um, have. Unfortunately, it's something we, we deal with on a daily basis, differences of interpretation. I think if we set that aside and use the principles of performance-based planning to look at what we're assessing against, uh, which is performance outcome PO4, uh, the applicant is not required to comply with the acceptable outcome. Uh, the applicant is only required to comply with the performance outcome or we're failing to comply with the performance outcome with the overall outcomes or the purpose of the code or potentially the strategic framework. 
and where they fail to comply with elements of any of those higher order parts of the scheme, uh, they will be assessed against uh, whether or not their proposal or their development advances the purpose of the Planning Act. So it, it, it goes from the very detailed and dealing with the minutiae all the way up to the very broad uh, levels. And right now we're dealing with the, the most detailed uh, of levels. And if we step it up just one, one order to the performance outcome, uh, uh, I suggest that the proposal is definitely consistent with the performance outcome in my view, as, as the assessing officer's view, uh, uh, consistent with the assessing officer's view, uh, because it's extractive uh, industry and it's consistent with um, the um, uh, extraction of a, well, a use of a natural resource being water. Uh, yeah, if I could just add a little bit. The reason why, I mean, the other issue here is that it is an impact assessment application, not a code assessment application. That's correct, isn't it? Correct. Which means that you bring to bear the entire planning scheme onto this particular assessment. If it was code assessment, we would tend to just stick to the POs and AOs. But because it's impact, it um, involves an assessment involving the entire planning scheme. So that's the difference. Um, and certainly when you're dealing with a code accessible application, often we do get into these interpretive discussions about does it or doesn't it? Is it or isn't it? But um, this is, this is impact assessment, and even if it was inconsistent, there is no prohibition in the planning scheme. Councils cannot introduce prohibitions into their planning schemes. The only level of government that can do that is the state government, through its uh, SEQ regional plan, basically. Okay, any further questions? Um for the applicant or for any of our staff before we move to uh, reinstate standing orders. Mr Mayor, if I might just say, uh, we're talking about the size of the vehicle. Um, does the applicant understand that a B-double won't be acceptable on that road to, for the extraction? Thank you. Yes, Councillor, that's understood. Yep. Thank you. That's, that's not an issue from their perspective. So. Okay, councillors, uh, any further questions before we reinstate standing orders? Not, would someone move accordingly, please? Councillor MacDonald and Councillor Von Hoff, those in favour? It's carried. Councillors, uh, I await uh, uh, your instructions in terms of the recommendations or otherwise. <clears throat> move. We've got a mover. I'm happy to move the recommendation as is. M recommendation has been moved by Councillor McDonald. Ca Sorry, I should add with that, the change yeah. to re um, condition number one. Yes. The 18. With the quantity of uh, water. Yeah. Councillor McMahon, you were attempting to move or second that, were you? I was, yeah. I'm happy to move it um, and speak for it. If been you moved know. and you've seconded. Um, will there be debate? Anyone wishing to speak against the motion? Uh, Councillor MacDonald, speak for the motion, please. Um, happy to speak for the motion, Mr Mayor. I, th I think we've, it's been a very good conversation and discussion, I have to say, to get to this point, keeping in mind, and it's always uh, forefront of my mind, that we're actually dealing not with the, the water, that's a separate body that's dealt with that, it's around uh, the, uh, the extractive <coughs> part of that, and more so, uh, not so much the extractive part, but what happens to the water. And therefore, the conditions that have been put uh, within the development application and has been obviously uh, articulated uh, by a number of people around the room and followed up uh, gives me comfort to know that uh, both the applicant and councillors are fully aware, as does council obviously, council officers are aware of the conditions and that uh, those submitters that are in that area, if uh, they... Um, make themselves aware of those conditions as well. If, if they see things that aren't um, in order with those conditions, then they have the right, as anyone does, to voice their opinion. Um, with all that on balance, um, I believe that uh, this, uh, this decision gives uh, this folk an opportunity to um, continue their 
production of, of what they're doing, their limes, and also diversify into uh, the kombucha or whichever that may end up being. So therefore I'm happy to move it. Anyone wishing to speak against the recommendation? No one wishing to speak against? I think uh, in those circumstances it's appropriate that I close the debate and call for the vote. Those in favour? Uh, the recommendation is carried. Thank you very much, councillors. Thank you very much for those who've watched online. Thanks very much for those who've been here today. Uh, I will close the meeting.